Hello, knowledge seekers. In this episode of 20 Minute Books, we delve into the realm of irrational behavior as we explore the book Talking to Crazy by Mark Goulston. Is there a crazy person in your life that pushes your buttons and makes communication a nightmare? Do you often find yourself feeling helpless and at a loss for words? Well, this book might just be the answer you have been searching for. Talking to Crazy recognizes that each individual at one point or another may exhibit irrational behavior. The key is knowing how to respond to keep the situation under control. With our exploration, we'll gain a fresh perspective on empathy, communication, and maintaining a calm demeanor. The author's take on managing crazy mode in others, backed by his extensive experience as a psychiatrist and business advisor, provides practical insights on mitigating chaotic interactions. So, whether you are a person grappling with anger management issues, someone struggling with constructive communication in a relationship, or a parent or teacher dealing with young adults, this book will offer you invaluable advice on navigating through intense emotional scenarios. A highly respected thought leader, Goulston is the author of best-selling books including Just Listen and Get Out of Your Own Way. His renowned expertise sets the foundation for this enlightening journey through the often mystifying realm of human behavior. Gear up for an intriguing discussion as we unravel the nuances of talking to crazy. Let's start a conversation about those challenging interactions and how we can rise above them. Stay tuned. Talking to Crazy, How to Deal with the Irrational and Impossible People in Your Life. Introduction. Dive into the realm of insanity. Recognize and manage irrationality. Imagine this. You're deeply engrossed in a peaceful conversation with someone dear to you when, unexpectedly, they utter something that completely throws you off balance. What? How could they say that, you wonder? as your heartbeat quickens, your cheeks flush, and an avalanche of emotions prompt you to lose control? All of a sudden, you're yelling, your calm demeanor replaced with unchecked rage. As the outburst subsides, it takes you a whole hour just to regain your composure. So, are you sure you're not the crazy one? How else can you account for such an erratic outburst? Well, buckle up as we delve deep into the bewildering world of human irrationality, a terrain we all occasionally stumble upon. But what drives us, supposedly sane adults, to such insanity? More crucially, how do we manage such unpredictable behavior, especially when it emerges from within us? Prepare to unravel the triggers of irrational conduct, techniques to handle individuals who consistently defy your norm and when it's time to seek professional help to tackle extreme craziness. Part 1. Embrace the fact that we all have our moments of madness. Isn't it baffling how even the most rational among us can be blindsided by sudden flashes of irrationality? Indeed, it wouldn't be wrong to say that each of us has had moments where we were, well, not quite ourselves, where we could have legitimately been labelled as crazy, But what exactly does it mean to be crazy in this scenario? We're not referring to clinical mental disorders or psychiatric conditions. Rather, we're focusing on those transient bouts of irrational behavior that anyone could experience. These temporary episodes of craziness can take various forms. Maybe you find yourself denying reality or turning a deaf ear to logical arguments. Or you might find yourself speaking absurdities or acting against your own interests. The first step to curb these irrational tendencies is to acknowledge their existence. Owning up to your occasional bouts of craziness is an essential part of learning to deal with the irrational behavior in others. Once you comprehend your own irrational inclinations, you'll find yourself better equipped to empathize with others' eccentricities. And trust me, empathy is key. Without it, you risk getting pulled into the whirlwind of irrationality, responding to craziness with craziness. However, if you can maintain your composure amidst chaos, you can potentially soothe the irrational individual. Instead of reacting impulsively, strive to decipher the root cause of their irrational behavior 
This way, you're less likely to be manipulated by their madness. To illustrate, let's say someone questioning your sincerity triggers you to completely retreat into your shell. If you're aware of this tendency, you'll recognize similar reactions in others. With this knowledge, you can navigate the situation tactfully rather than escalating it further. Part 2. Recognize what ignites irrationality and foster empathy to deal with it. When someone around you suddenly flips into irrationality, your initial response might be one of confusion or frustration. But here's some crucial advice. Refrain from arguing. Attempting to debate with a person in the midst of a crazy episode rarely helps. Typically, such bouts of irrationality are deeply rooted in significant past events, often stemming from childhood experiences. For instance, individuals who were deprived of love in their formative years might develop a pessimistic outlook, even when you present them with the most logical arguments or appealing proposals, they might resist, insisting that your idea is doomed to fail. The truth is we all carry around some baggage from the past. When irrationality is triggered in an individual, no amount of logical reasoning can restore their sanity because, in that moment, they're unable to engage with rational arguments. So instead of opting for an argument, strive to discern the individual's modus operandi the distinct behavioural pattern they display when a bout of irrationality sets in. Maybe they yell, launch a personal attack, or simply start ignoring you. Identifying these patterns and pinpointing the precise triggers can give you a better understanding of their irrational behaviour. Armed with this knowledge, make a conscious effort to empathise with them. Try to step into their shoes and understand what they might be experiencing. By connecting with them on an emotional level, you might be able to guide them back towards rational thinking. For instance, if someone is being overly pessimistic about a situation, don't just enumerate the reasons why everything will turn out fine. Instead, start from their viewpoint of a world where nothing works out and build your argument from there. Certainly, engaging with an irrational individual is challenging. However, it's definitely more effective than allowing their craziness to drive you up the wall. Part 3. Steer clear of power conflicts with irrational individuals, focus on empathy, and establish firm boundaries. What often triggers people to switch into irrationality mode? It primarily boils down to control issues. People resort to irrational behavior when they feel a loss of control. For instance, if someone is sidelined in a conversation, they might start yelling, trying to regain control by overpowering others. However, these power struggles can be skillfully navigated by cooperating with the irrational individual rather than attempting to overpower their brash behavior. This can be achieved in a few ways. One strategy is to allow the irrational person to maintain a sense of control. By doing so, their motivation to persist in their irrational behavior might decrease. Take, for example, an incident involving the author. He unintentionally cut off a fellow motorist who forced him to the roadside and approached him threateningly. Rather than fight back, the author disarmingly said he was having such a terrible day that he was waiting for someone to come and end it all, suggesting that the driver might be that person. Another tactic to defuse such situations involves apologizing sincerely and showing empathy. This could entail preempting their tirade by verbalizing the complaints they might harbor against you. In essence, you're taking the wind out of their sails reducing their need to vent their frustrations and enabling both parties to move forward. If, for example, your dog barks all night and disturbs your neighbors, take the initiative. Approach them and admit that you'd be upset too if a neighbor's dog caused a nightly disturbance. In being specific about their potential complaints, you show understanding and reduce the likelihood of an outburst. However, it's also critical to establish clear boundaries with irrational individuals. If someone starts yelling at you on the phone, inform them that you'll disconnect the call if the shouting persists. Once they realize that there are lines they cannot cross, they're less likely to resort to such behavior in the future. Part 4. Don't engage with the irrational exterior. Aim to connect with the rational interior. When you're faced with someone shouting at you, it can be easy to lose sight of the fact that their irrational behavior 
is a transitory state. However, no matter how irrational someone seems, there's always a rational part within them. Accessing this rational part is the trick to calming them down. So, if a loved one spirals into a bout of irrationality, remember that underneath that exterior, they're still the same good-hearted person. Their irrational behavior doesn't define them in their entirety. They still have an inner rationality that's tuned into what you're saying. Hence, focus your efforts on reaching that part rather than engaging with their irrational front. You can strive to connect with their rational side by diverting their attention to something ordinary, like making dinner. This could potentially distract them from their current stressor. Once they've cooled down, inquire about their earlier outburst. You could even ask them for guidance on how to handle their irrational behavior in the future. Patience is key when dealing with an irrational individual. You need to wait for them to transition to a state where it's possible to connect with them meaningfully. When in the throes of their irrational episode, they might lash out without any intent of being constructive or even slightly rational. They may even resort to harsh words, declaring how much they despise you or how you're the worst thing that ever happened to them. Rational individuals often instinctively distance themselves from such confrontations. However, before you consider this route, remember that people in irrational states often don't truly mean what they say. So think twice before severing a friendship or relationship over a temporary irrational episode. Instead, wait for them to regain their composure and ask them if they genuinely meant what they said during their irrational outburst. More often than not, you'll find that their answer is a resounding no. Part 5. Manipulators are often driven by frustration or anger, so aid them in addressing it. Irrationality can take many forms. While outbursts such as yelling or crying are more apparent, manipulation is a subtler yet equally significant form of irrational behavior. People resort to manipulation when they are unable to accept a no. They may attempt to create discord between two individuals as an outlet for their anger. Consider a teenager who's told by his mother that he can't have pizza for dinner. He might react by instigating tension between his parents, complaining about his mother to his father. Likewise, if a friend calls you late at night to complain about a mutual friend, they're displaying similar manipulative behavior. Manipulators engage in such tactics, hoping to flip the initial no into a yes. However, it's crucial not to fall prey to their manipulation. Be clear, yet gentle in your approach with such individuals. One way to tackle manipulative attempts is by expressing your interest in hearing the manipulator's concerns, but also insisting on discussing the issue with the person being badmouthed. You can also point out that the manipulator might be overreacting or obsessing over getting their way. However, it's important to avoid getting angry as that can only exacerbate the situation. Fear of rejection can also trigger irrational behavior. Someone who dreads hearing a no may hesitate to ask for help or even refuse assistance when it's offered. This might stem from past experiences where they were turned down when they needed help. In such cases, reassure them directly that they can ask you for help whenever necessary. Regularly check in with them to ensure everything's all right, as they might not be forthcoming about their struggles. Part 6. Disarm narcissistic and sarcastic individuals with unexpected responses or actions. We've already established that a desire for control often underpins irrational behavior. This desire for control is especially prevalent in another subset of irrational people, the ones who believe they know it all. There are various strategies to handle a know-it-all, some of which might seem counterintuitive. For instance, boosting the ego of a know-it-all can actually decrease their need to assert their superiority. When confronted with a person exhibiting narcissistic behavior, resist the urge to distance yourself. Instead, defy their expectations by agreeing with them. Validate their feelings of superiority. For instance, if a person starts disparaging others to feed their ego, tell them you consider yourself fortunate to have them on your side. Once you've captured their attention, gently explain how their know-it-all attitude might be pushing people away. This sort of narcissistic behavior shares some similarities with sarcastic behavior. Both can act as defense mechanisms, but often end up isolating the individual instead. 
Take, for example, the typical teenage sarcasm. Teenagers often distance themselves from their parents through frequent sarcastic remarks. However, this isn't born out of malice. Teenage sarcasm is often a response to stress, a shield against perceived threats. If you encounter a persistently sarcastic person, strive to understand their sarcasm to anticipate when it might surface. When they make a sarcastic comment, catch them off guard by reciprocating the sarcasm. Imagine having a sarcastic boss who constantly questions your professional competence. If they remark something like, I don't know why I'm asking you, of all people, respond with, yeah, me neither. A response like this will capture their attention and might even unsettle them a bit. It's then that you can engage in a more rational conversation with them. Part 7. Preserve respect and collaboration with your partner, especially during separations. Prioritize the children. Love is a treasure that's difficult to find but easy to lose. It can also be fractured by irrational behavior. But there are strategies you can employ to shield your relationship from such erratic actions. Many people justify a breakup with comments such as, she was too demanding or he was always out late. But these issues rarely constitute the real reasons behind a relationship's dissolution. Mostly, it's the inability of a couple to constructively deal with problems that leads to the relationship's demise. So when your partner errs, resist the temptation to get angry. Instead, pledge to be their champion. Commit to sharing the daily trials, frustrations, setbacks, and triumphs with your partner. Stand by your partner in all circumstances. Becoming each other's champion is an effective way to breathe life back into a faltering relationship. And, if separation becomes unavoidable and children are involved, ensure that the process doesn't hurt them. Reigniting a lost love is challenging, but acknowledging its impossibility can be even tougher. If you're ever tempted to act irrationally, remember who should always take precedence, your children. Many couples resort to hostility or cruelty during divorce proceedings. They lose themselves in bitter disputes or custody wars. Such behavior can harm your children's mental well-being, so it's crucial to take a step back before succumbing to irrational impulses. Even amidst disagreements on what's best for the children, you and your partner must maintain respect and cooperation. The objective shouldn't be to gain custody of your child, but to shield the child from the scars of your divorce. Part 8. When a significant other closes off and refuses to communicate, attempt to articulate your partner's thoughts for them. Handling a person who's spiraling into irrational behavior and lashing out can be challenging. However, dealing with the polar opposite, a person who shuts down and refrains from sharing their thoughts, can be equally tough. When a loved one adopts this stance, it's important to articulate the intense thoughts you suspect they might be grappling with. Feelings, particularly negative ones, can be overpowering. While we often try to express these emotions, Sometimes they can be so overwhelming that we choose to suppress them instead. When a person bottles up their negative feelings, they might end up directing these suppressed emotions at others, for example, their partner. Consider two parents with a disabled child who are afraid to acknowledge their resentment towards their child. Consequently, they might start behaving irrationally with each other. If your partner begins to act out, don't take it personally. Voice what you believe your partner might be thinking and ask if you've hit the mark. This ensuing conversation could be challenging, but it's a vital first step towards mitigating the irrational behavior. Another tactic to get your partner to share their thoughts is to ask them to repeat statements after you. Some individuals shut down during stressful times. In such cases, help your partner by verbalizing a thought you think they might have and ask them to echo it. This could surprise them and ideally will ignite a conversation. This strategy also shows your partner the difficulty their silence imposes on you. When they realize how much they matter to you, they might strive to be more inclusive, allowing you into their world. Part 9. Individuals with serious mental illness require professional intervention. You can't tackle this single-handedly. Until now, we've delved into strategies to assist a person exhibiting irrational behavior to regain their equilibrium. However, 
it's crucial to acknowledge that in some cases, this approach may not suffice. If a person is grappling with a severe mental illness, they'll need professional intervention. Regardless of how patient and compassionate you are, you can't heal someone with a significant mental disorder on your own. A genuine mental illness goes beyond fleeting, irrational behavior. If a loved one has a personality disorder or is battling addiction or suicidal thoughts, these issues demand professional attention. There are various forms of professional help available for those who need it. Medical-based psychiatry is a form of first aid. Its goal is to stabilize an individual to enable further steps to be taken. Psychotherapy is designed to help people manage their issues over a prolonged period. Therapists equip patients with coping mechanisms to modify their perspective on life. Counseling bears a resemblance to psychotherapy but is less intense. Counseling sessions tend to be shorter and less frequent compared to therapy sessions. Psychosocial rehabilitation aims to prevent a patient from reverting to their mental illness or destructive behavior cycle. It also helps them cope with the challenges associated with reintegrating into regular life. Lastly, mentoring provides support by offering the encouragement and motivation someone might need to combat their mental illness. Persuading a mentally ill individual to seek help can be a daunting task, but if you maintain empathy and cultivate a strong bond with them, you might succeed. Hence, make sure to actively listen to what they have to say. Strive to understand their emotions and see the world from their perspective. Agree with them as much as you can. Reassure them that you would likely feel the same if you were in their shoes. Final summary. The central theme in this book. Practically everyone experiences episodes of irrational behavior. When you find yourself dealing with such a person, strive to empathize and steer clear of power dynamics. Maintain respect, divert sarcasm, and aid the individual in expressing their thoughts if they're struggling to do so. Your ultimate aim should be to guide the person back to rationality, facilitating a constructive conversation. And bear in mind, if the individual is suffering from a genuine mental illness, refrain from attempting to fix them on your own. Instead, encourage them to seek professional assistance. Thank you for joining me today on this journey of learning and discovery as we explored the insights of another thought-provoking book in our growing library of knowledge. If you've enjoyed our time together, please take a moment to follow our podcast, give us a five-star rating, and share 20-minute books with other knowledge seekers. Your support truly means a lot. Don't forget to join me again in the next episode, where we will delve into another enriching book. Until then. Happy reading and happy listening.